Hey, our upgrade pace is looking solid right now. But I do think we need to push harder if we want to stay competitive. You know what, Chris? I actually don't give a rat's ass. You know, getting towards the end of the second season with this team, I really don't care at this point about the upgrades because we've got a great car anyway. I'm not really focusing on that, but um, thanks once again for what is it actually, if you look closer, closely, guys, is a very useless development comparison chart. Look at that. Nothing has changed for three races, and yet he, he decided to give us a comparison. So, um, yeah, great. Looks like Chris um, is uh, as, as stupid as ever. But anyway, guys, what's going on, guys? That was a bit of a weird intro to the video. But nonetheless, we're back for F1 2017 Corona, episode 136 today for the Japanese Grand Prix. It's been a hot minute and over a week, I think, since the last episode was posted. So be sure to go check that one out before you see this one, guys. Episode 135, a lot of drama in the episode with the race leaders. So be sure to see that one before you continue on with this. But you can see we got a sponsor bonus, which was, I guess, kind of interesting interesting surprising actually to me um i mean i guess we did win obviously singapore so maybe that kind of factored into it but obviously uh, you know with uh, five rounds to go including this one uh sponsor bonus isn't going to be too uh, important for us because uh, every upgrade we have is a major upgrade so unfortunately it's going to take too long for them to come into the end of the season so really that's not going to matter that's just going to be banked up there and pretty much being chucked away at the end of the season i think um we'll have to see in terms of how the season wraps up but uh, you know it could potentially just be 750 50 points that just gets stored away for nothing but we move on then into the Japanese Grand Prix into practice you saw there raining in the animations there for the intro and that's going to be important for us in practice actually because it looks like it might be raining for uh, two thirds of the race weekend that being qualifying as well on Saturday so we might have to try and get in some laps try and get used to the car in those conditions before we go on to Saturday then and try and do a good job of course in general I, I don't have amazing pace in the inters or the full wets compared to my dry uh, pace versus the AI so we're going to have to try our best and uh, gonna buck up a, a result but it's going to be a little bit more uh, challenging to maybe take the fight to uh, what has been the leaders so far which has been the kind of force Indian the Red Bull guys you must say in the last few rounds here Ferrari still lagging a little bit but they've shown some signs of late season improvement in the, in the last five episodes I would say so they definitely have a good chance of maybe trying to beat us of course our main rival is Sebastian Vettel in game there and uh, obviously, obviously we're trying to beat both Ferraris I've said many times and times again in the last couple of episodes because we're trying to get the best uh, reputation we can for Ferrari to hopefully, fingers crossed, get some sort of contract offer. You know what? I I'm going to be honest, though, as the as the episodes have gone on lately in this season, I've been getting less and less confident about that. But, you know, we're just going to focus then on the track action and try and double down on, on the championship here if we can here at Suzuka. I mean, I love coming here. It's a great circuit on the game. Obviously, they redid the circuit for this year's game and uh, it's, you know, been a fabulous track to drive, even in the wet. We're sliding around on our first flying lap and our, I think our only flying lap in in the end actually so it does look a little bit shaky but actually the time has been there obviously the engine power is there for us to make the time up so just need to watch out on the exit you can see a little bit wish-washy and skating around the entire lap really in all sectors but across the line and for the moment when we crossed the line it was a provisional pole unfortunately though my kind of smile from that went away as we ended the session in P7 I guess my lucky P7 though is has uh, been my lucky number for a quite a, some time now in general in life not just in F1 games but Max Verstappen on pole position then with the two force Indians in second and third but unfortunately for me Vettel does pit me like I said the Ferraris have a good uh, good uh, reckoning of trying to get around us here in the intermediate conditions and Vettel has just done that Hamilton also beat me so that's a double slam and a slap to my face actually and unfortunately that's not going to do me any good in the reputation level so before the weekend has even really started it's a bit of a disaster in terms of the reputation game we're playing and so even if we go on to win the race it's going to be pretty damn difficult to even you know make up the reputation I think, honestly, unless we're literally winning the race, both Ferraris are right at the back of the grid at the end of the, this thing, and Hamilton's nowhere to be seen, but even then, I think it'll be enough, maybe. So that wasn't a great way to start the weekend, but as I said, I'm going to focus on the track racing instead and just focus on, uh, in the moment, you know, I'm going for as many points as I can get in a championship to keep this lead, keep the health lead we've got. So let's go to the grid then, see if there's any penalties to maybe help us out ahead of us, because we're, you know, actually quite down the way compared to the last few races, and then we'll get into this race. We're almost ready to go then, and this is what the starting grid looks like for today's race. Max Verstappen put in a fantastic lap yesterday and he starts from pole position with Esteban Ocon alongside. Looking down the rest of the grid we have Perez, Hülkenberg, Lewis Hamilton and Vettel a Mercedes, Raikkonen, Palmer and Daniel Ricciardo, Grosjean, Sainz, Daniel Kvyat and Magnussen. Alonso, Van Dorn, Lance Stroll, and Felipe Massa, Ericsson, and Pascal Wehrlein completes the grid. 
And with preparations almost complete, let's head down to the track. So no penalties to talk about then. So we remain in P7, at least at the sharp end, no penalties. And you can see we're on medium tyres as the entire grid actually will have free choice of tyres. So we're going to go to the soft tyres, actually. Uh, the team default want me to start mediums, but I want that initial bite in of the soft compound tyre. Then we'll go to the mediums. That'll be a very easy one stop. I think we've done that many, many times before. Should even in the Mercedes car, which has been quite harsh on its tyres, should be pretty simple and straightforward and should try and help us get up the order from P7. So here we go then to five red lights for round number 16 of season seven. And the Japanese Grand Prix. We're underway. It is a good start compared to Sebastian Vettel. A little bit of wheel spin in third gear, but we get the traction down up into Richmond straight away to try and uh, attack turn one if we can, but we've been hit. We've been hit by the uh, Ferrari and Vettel, I think that was, and Vettel goes ahead unscathed and no damage for him, and we're at the back of the grid now. Sebastian Vettel, I think, has hit us, and we've half spun round, and uh, it's another disaster in the third disaster in five races now it's been for us. We've been getting so unlucky at the start of Grand Prix as of late. You can see into turn one then. Uh, looks like Vettel made some contact with Raikkonen and it was a bit of ping pong ironically. Uh, Vettel, I know he loves that uh, sport himself uh, on the off-race weekends uh, but seemingly he's taken it to the racetrack here today and he's had a bit of ping pong between Raikkonen and then uh, kind of bouncing to me it looks like. You can see him. Yeah, pretty much. It's, uh, uh, well not exactly ping pong but looks like Raikkonen almost dragged him into me. It, it's kind of like Raikkonen and myself were both kind of pinching Vettel into the middle but I felt like I was taking the line as wide as I could. Uh, Raikkonen was the one kind of not leaving enough room onto his left-hand side, swiped across a bit, dragged Vettel with him and pushed him into me and that spun me round and ultimately then I can't really blame Vettel to be fair but uh, annoyingly I, I want to be a bit angry at Ferrari but uh, honestly just a bit of a racing incident, that's unfortunate. Do let me know in the comments below if you think Raikkonen could have given a bit more room, could maybe I given more room in the moment obviously you have a split second to think about these things so I don't know, maybe I could have given a bit more room on the left but I, I felt like I was so wide already. But anyway now, we move there into lap two. We've already made two overtakes on the Sauber cars. Now, a really nice move on Lance Stoll around the outside. Kind of danced around his outside there, the young Canadian. And that was a really satisfying move, actually, and a crucial one because I had to get past him uh, before we could then go charging off uh, to attack Stoffel Van Dorn then. So we're already up into P17. So good progress made here, but in two laps or one and a half, really. But uh, we've got a mountain to climb, really, because you can see the top guys are already down towards, uh, you know, halfway down towards this straight towards 130R. So plenty to go now. The one stop may work even better now for us in this race compared to the two stop. But obviously, we know we have a relatively strong car in the dry at least. So we're making good progress already. We took a Van Dorn very easily in the spoon section into 130R now. Closing up a fleet and Massa and he's really slow on the exit. We have to go off track a little bit, take to the grass. And that was a bit of evasive action there uh, for giving us a warning. But I think you can just kind of take that with a pinch of salt because that was so, so close to just smashing into the back of him. And I think, you know, merits in terms of just the, the spectacle of the overtake really going through on the, on the right hand side there. Such a tight bit of space to overtake Massa. And now we dive down the inside of the has to go off into P14, lock off on the left front. So that's going to help the tyre wear that much. But uh, the tyres are pretty durable around Suzuka. And so we're making really good progress. You know, we're pretty much we're at this rate, you know, three cars a lap here. We'll pretty much be at the leaders if we continue this on in only a couple of laps. So uh, let's uh, hope we can continue this through. We're now on the back of Carlos Sainz after taking Magnussen there. The Toro Rosso should be pretty easy in a straight line, but he's got some slipstream off the McLaren. I think that is a Fernando Alonso up ahead. But in the second phase of the straight, we're closing in quite rapidly now with Rich Mix. And we're going to go around the outside in the middle, 130 at the apex. We overtake him, and then we're going to switch to the left-hand side to try and take Fernando Alonso. Alonso. So it's going to be a double overtake in this span of just a little straight there just before the chicane. Absolutely awesome stuff to dart off from the outside, then switch it right to the left straight away. Lightning reactions there and a nice overtake on the two-time world champion. And so now we'll close up on the second tile Ross of the afternoon down the inside of the rush in there. In one foul swoop will get him really nicely done stuff. The rear end kicks out a little bit for style and we're up the order. So some really nice, over nice overtakes being done here at Suzuka. And so uh, it may be a bit of an annoying situation having to make all these overtakes just to get back to the Ferrari cars which are the ones we're kind of focusing on but at least it's, a, it's quite a fun race to have at Suzuka and obviously as I said before fun track to drive always love coming here and so if you can make overtakes like this as well it's uh, just equally even more fun so now down the inside now the Haas and the Red Bull in one go to Ricardo dive bomb on Ricardo there 
A little bit of contact made on the right front tyre, but Ricardo gave us the room to work with, and we made a double overtake into spoon corners. And now you can see Ricardo actually under uh, under attack from the Haas. And up ahead, Hulkenberg's been overtaken by Palmer. We're going to overtake Hulkenberg now down the inside of 130R, switch to the outside, and just like we did a mass on the right hand side, so so close to be squeezed out down the inside of Palmer into the chicane. Doesn't work out. Palmer actually does a great job to defend from me, and so we have to be patient and wait for the next straight. But what what an amount of action now from what was the hairpin all the way to the next lap onto the first corner on the left hand side with DRS in a straight line overtake the second Renault and we're up into P7 and Bob's your uncle 13 overtakes in 5 laps absolutely awesome stuff here at the Japanese Grand Prix. Guys, be sure to smash that like button. I think that's been uh, the most amount of action we've had all season, really, in a short amount of laps there. I think, if, I'm, if my memory serves correct, there might be some equally entertaining ones, but in, 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 in short-term memory, that one is a very fun one. And now we look ahead, and we've got a clean air to this fight between the two Ferrari cars. Vettel behind Raikkonen, who is behind one of the Force Indias. Oh, I can't quite tell. I think it's Esteban Ocon, because I think Sergio Perez is the one that leads the Grand Prix from Max Verstappen. As you saw earlier in the previous clip, I looked behind me down the straight and uh, Palmer was actually keeping me pretty honest and he was still there so a bit of an odd situation I overtook him so rapidly but after I overtook Palmer he started to speed up quite a bit so it's almost like he got motivated by that so he's going to try and stick with me as I try and close up on this fight you can see Kimmy being squeezed out then by Ocon as he tries to make a move on the left hand side just doesn't do it for the Iceman there and uh, Vettel's able to close up but the hope is that if those two continue to fight and all three of them continue to fight that will slow them all down obviously if they're going side by side in moments and that will just uh, play into mine and I guess Jolly and Palmer's hands, as, as I said, Palmer's sticking with us. But we move on to the next lap. Vettel now has a go at Kimi, or might try and have a go, I should say. He looks on the left-hand side, but ultimately nothing is there for him into turn one. And he sticks nose to tail with his teammate there. So those two falling away from Ocon slightly. And you can see I was just there in the background there. We move on to lap 11, and my teammate is in the pits, Lewis Hamilton then. And so we're going to continue on for at least one more lap. I think we're probably going to come in around lap 12, lap 13, I would say. So it's not uh, too much of an issue, uh, that spin, and then our Hamilton coming in first. That's not exactly blocking our our planned pit stop here. This phase, I was still kind of curious to see what the AI were doing. And I think Hamilton has gone on to a two-stop. So we might have a good chance of jumping people like Hamilton. And Hamilton was ahead, I think, of both Ferraris and the Force India. So he could be able to jump all of those guys if the one-stop works that well. We'll have to see about that. I'm not too certain. Because uh, also, you know, you never know. The Force Indians, for sure, might have a good chance of doing a one-stop themselves. We know they have very good tyre wear. Not sure about the Ferraris. But we're on to mediums then as we move on into lap 13 then, as I mentioned. And Palmer there on super soft tyres on the top left. So at least the Renault guys, or at least Palmer's doing a two-stop. So he was behind us. And so that's not a worry for us. Although, he will be pretty damn rapid being two uh, tyre compounds uh, faster than us. Obviously, super soft to the medium tyres. So that's going to be interesting. He was already keeping me honest before, as I mentioned. He's going to be even more on my rear end now with those tyres versus mine. So let's try and dispatch of uh, Fiat first again for the second time in this Grand Prix. And then we'll worry about our fellow Brit in uh, where the Ferraris are and all this. We get a very, very close to him, actually, as we move on the right-hand side just before the spoon section there. But as we move into now towards that 14 across the line, we'll look on the top left. Vettel on medium. So Vettel is doing a one-stop with me. So we're going to have to legitimately try and overtake and catch Vettel. Uh, you know, let alone overtake. We have to catch him first. He's still quite a bit ahead of us. And that is the difference of the spin and all the overtakes I had to make versus him just being there the entire time this Grand Prix so a little bit unfair in terms of this fight but I'm going to have to try and dig deep and try and do that but as we move on to lap 15 then Palmer right up my gearbox as expected and we're going to go into the hairpin on the left hand side break early and let him through on the right hand side on purpose there so a bit of a Wiley or Fox strategy here and it may not work but the theory is do exactly what he did to us um, basically in the previous stint. We helped uh, him. We dragged him along that entire first stint because he kept up with me. If I can stay in his DRS, he'll drag us along. So you can see here, moving on to lap 16, DRS open, rich mix flowing, and we'll try and stay with him in sector one. But the only issue is in sector two and three, uh, especially Sector 2, he's very rapid now with the Renault obviously being a very light chassis and then obviously just the two tyre compound difference. And by the time we reach the end of the next lap, lap 17 then onto it, uh, you can see the theory has already been blown to smithereens because Palmer is actually too fast for us. But this could, still could work out because he's on a two-stop. Maybe he goes and attacks Vettel and slows him down. If he slows Vettel down enough whilst attacking him, he could uh, bring Vettel back into play for us because at the moment, just pace versus pace, no traffic involved, no Palmer's involved. 
Vettel is faster than me at the moment around this circuit on medium tyres. I just do not have enough pace to close up the seven plus second gap he has on me. So that was my only real hope. Um, in hindsight, maybe you think it would be a bit of a weird strategy, but also remember, Palmer's going to fall behind us anyway. So it's no harm to me to let him through right now because he's going to fall behind us anyway. Again, just like my teammate has Hamilton here on the two stop. He's on super soft tyres now. So with only seven laps to go, he's going to be pretty rapid to try and attack us. But uh, we should have this in the bag in terms of staying ahead of him because I'm quite confident I can keep him at bay because, you know, when I'm on purpose trying to defend, I will be able to defend. Obviously, in the case of Palmer, that was a different situation. But now I'm going to be not letting Palmer back through either as we move on to lap 21. Verstappen now is pit. He's on a two stop. So Verstappen, from second place, I think it was, falls behind to P5. And he's going to have to do a lot of overtaking now on both Ferrari cars and the Force Indies. He wants to get back into the podium positions here. You can see here he is, Max Verstappen, down the back straight towards 130R, closing rapidly on Sebastian Vettel. We'll try and move to the left-hand side. Doesn't quite work out there. And uh, unlike the real-life scenario, of Verstappen on Vettel, Verstappen Stappen thinks better of it and is patient in that move and he's going to wait for the right opportunity to make the overtake as he moves on into the last corner then as we move on to the kind of shoulder camera and we now move down the main straight DRS open Vettel tries to defend uh, Verstappen even more to the inside then Superstar V medium Red Bull V Ferrari and the Dutchman is down the inside and Vettel skating through the exit of turn one as he tries to control the car and tried to defend as well as he could but uh, pointless in the end for him and so we'll move into the final stages of this Grand Prix then on lap 23 you can see Hamilton is gaining and gaining down this back straight on the left hand side mirror you can see he's right there for the taking of oh, for, for the pickings I should rather say as he's the one trying to attack us but you can see just keeping it calm on the racing line a little bit of a lock up into the chicane that's fine as well he's unable to make anything work there on the exit though big tank slapper and a big uh, hand of opposite lock on the left hand side there and so we go to the inside and try and defend there Hamilton's going to come we move back to the racing line our one move there back to racing line into turn one nice and easy the car you can see the rear end starts to slide as the tire wear starts to kick in and the medium tires in general aren't amazing around this track they're very durable but they're not amazing around this track so not the ideal scenario I want to be in but as I said you know I'm very confident we can just keep this head and you can see Hamilton tries something on the right doesn't work out we move back to the racing line through 130R and he's still there behind us and just like you know very uh, 2017s kind of scenario the dirty air off the back of my car the hot exhaust plumes just means Hamilton just doesn't have the grip to try and uh, lick the stamp and send it as it was Daniel Ricciardo would put it in now he's crossed the line onto the last lap of the Grand Prix Hamilton has one final chance here into turn one little bit of weaving there not gonna lie on the racing line but not too much not very aggressive into turn one and we're gonna keep it ahead of our team and as frustrating as that may be for Hamilton um, you know, I, I'm not really playing the team game this season. I haven't ever done really that much in, in some of your guys' arguments, but uh, more so this season than ever, I'm not really playing the team game here. So I'll happily just sit here, park the car on the apex and just see this through to P6. It's the maximum I can hope for. And to be fair, from last place on the grid to P6, I will take that. I will take that around Suzuka. Considering also, it wasn't just last place. It was last place and about half a sector behind from... P19 when I uh, got my composure back there so I'll say this has been a very successful comeback from what was a very uh, horrendous turn one at the Japanese Grand Prix you can see Sergio Perez has won that and obviously he's going to gain some uh, points on us on the championship but that's the thing we did such a great job in the first half of the season that you know we can afford to have some of these off races where an off race is still meaning P6 but an off race if you will uh, and still come through you know and be comfortable in the championship but the crucial thing is here I've been beaten by by both Ferrari cars so this is a massive slap for the reputation level we got beaten in qualifying by Seb here and now we're beaten by both Kimi and Seb in the race um I pretty much at this point I would say the reputation plan of trying to beat Ferrari as much as we can to get the reputation up to try and get a contract offer from them I just don't see it happening. Even though the Ferrari cars have been so, so bad. This is the first race. They've not, they've not had a retirement, remember. Uh, you know, in ages and ages. They've been so, so piss poor. Um, but we're still not going to get a contract due to the reputation level. And, you know, some of you guys have been saying it's not a glitch. It's, it's just the fact that I've moved teams so often. But I would say that is a glitch in itself. That is a flaw in the system. That, that shouldn't happen because it's a video game. Of course, people are going to want to move teams to make it interesting. Otherwise, you just get bored at the same team for multiple seasons. And so 
I feel like it's a massive flaw that I'm being forced to stay in the top team. Like, I can understand the logic. You're in the top car. Why would you want to move? But there's that thing of, you know, attention span and being bored after winning, you know, so many things. And obviously, we're, we're you know... And obviously, we're looking strong to go on towards a second championship with Mercedes. And I would like a different challenge. And what a challenge would it be to be at Ferrari then after such a dismal car they've had for Season 7 and such horrendous reliability and just a general bad luck season for them. How much of a challenge would it be to try and drag them back up into former glories? But uh, alas, at the moment, the game doesn't look like it's going to do that. I mean, it says we have potential contracts from Sauber, Taurus and Williams. So why not give me one of those cars? I mean, I wouldn't even mind a... A love affair return to Toro Rosso from the season one team I had. Uh, you know, that'd be better than just staying in Mercedes, but I don't have high hopes. But we'll just have to see because we've got four races left. And as I said, you know, the entertainment's still been pretty damn good. That was a really entertaining race. So looking forward to the next four to see what kind of uh, chaos we can get into, guys. But if you did enjoy that one, hit that like button. Remember, 13 overtakes in five laps. Can't complain there. That was a fun race there. So do smash the like button if you guys did enjoy that one. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you're around here, do get subscribed for weekly porn content. I've been over. Have a day, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.